Welcome to the high banks of Riverside International Speedway. 18 drivers are strapped in and ready for 300 laps of action as the NASCAR Pinty Series powers into the second half of the season. This place has been called the fastest one-third mile oval in Canada. Riverside International Speedway presents round number nine of the NASCAR Pinty Series calendar, the Bumper to Bumper 300 from picturesque Antigonish, Nova Scotia. Welcome to Canada's version of Bristol Motor Speedway. High banks and two very fast grooves of racing. And it's the only stop on the East Coast Tour for the NASCAR Pinty Series. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits. But Adam, we got a little rain last night. The sun's out. Beautiful day for racing today. It's a beautiful afternoon, but track time was limited for these drivers and teams, so it's going to be a real uphill battle for these crew chiefs and drivers to make the right adjustments. And it is one of the storylines we're going to be following here today. Several newcomers making a start here today in Riverside. One of them out of Mooresville, North Carolina, driving the number 28 throwback scheme is Brandon McReynolds and out of the DJK shop. And driving the number one CBRT entry is k and standout Julia Landauer. That driver comes from New York City, and she's going to be racing in the next three Pinty Series events. A couple other fresh faces. Connor James making his second start here today in the number 97. Pete Shepard returns to the series in the 79, driving into the Dave Jacobs stable. We have 300 laps to get to here today. Let's not wait. Let's go down trackside for today's command. The sounds of speed come to life on the front straightaway here at Riverside International Speedway. There is your points leader and your pole sitter for today's event, LP Dumoulin, but a solid field of race cars here today. It's a fantastic and competitive field of cars. Mark Antoine Cameron gonna fire from the outside of row number one. The field was lined up for the NASCAR rule book, which basically is in order of the point standings, Dave. Remember LP Dumoulin on the strength of his second place finish at Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières extended his points lead to 10 over Mark Antoine Cameron. Let's have a look at the VP Racing Fuel starting lineup. And as we said, LP Dumlin will bring him off on the pole with Cameron alongside. Starting third will be Alex Tagliani in the EpiPen 18 and Cole Powell in the Cups build all three. Looking back to roll number three, we've got DJ Kennington in the 17. Andrew Ranger alongside him, his teammate. The 74 is Kevin Lacroix and Donald Teach in roll number four. Rounding out the top 10, Julia Landauer in the one and Mark Dilley in the 0-2. And row number six brings us Brett Taylor in the 46 and Jean-Francois Dumoulin in the 04. Looking back to row number seven, that's where we find Adam Martin in the 19. Brandon McReynolds in the number 28. And Larry Jackson in the 25. Pete Shepard in the 79. That makes up row number eight. And rounding out the field in row nine, Connor James in the 97. And hometown favorite Donald Chisholm in the 89. So as we mentioned, we set the field on order by points, but there's a lot of storylines to follow here today. Let's take a look at today's E3 spark plugs race analysis, Adam. It's an interesting one. 300 laps and there will be two breaks this afternoon. One at lap 75, one at lap 225, and really the strategies are all over the place from what I've heard, Dave. And you don't know when they're going to stop. They do have the opportunity to stay out. Let's get down trackside and check in with Todd. Guys, we want to welcome our U.S. participants to this event in the number one CBRT machine, Julia Landauer, running the first of three events for the CBRT Bunch. Battles some carburetor gremlins during the practice. Seem to be okay for the race. In the 28, it's Brandon McReynolds, who has also participated in K&N along with Julia Landauer. He's got two victories in the K&N West Series. He and DJ Kennington have become fast friends, and he has prepared that number 28 machine. Both looking to learn these cars. they got 300 laps ahead of them. They'll have a handle on it by the end of this race. Well, and if anyone can get used to changing track conditions in a new race car, it would be Julia Landauer and Brandon McReynolds. They've got a lot of laps and a lot of different kinds of race cars. Yeah, but these cars very different from the ones they're used to, especially the K&N East and West cars. They have a totally different feel from the NASCAR Pinty Series cars, but we'll see. They have 300 laps to perfect it here today. 
LP Dumoulin, the race leader, is going to set the pace on the inside. Mark Antoine Cameron on the outside. Here we go, Dave. Green flag waves, and we're underway at Riverside. A little contact to start. to speed in a hurry this place is fast that's what everybody says in their first time here you see cole powell up on the outside says he loves the high banks and we oh have a car into the wall hard it's the zero two of mark dilly in turn number one dilly just clobbered the concrete in turn one that car shot straight up the banking caution is out could it have been a tire down on the zero two? It's awfully early for a tire to go down a right front tire, but that's exactly how it looked. And, and that is how it looked, Dave. My, oh my, Mark Jelly, the window net is down. That is a great sign. Let's have a look. Dilly halfway through the field on the outside. There he goes. That's not a, that whole car kind of slid sideways, and we're getting reports of fluid. You can see the dark line. I was just going to say, there you see it, into the fluid and into the wall goes the Leland Industries 0-2 of Mark Dilley. That was an ugly angle that he careened into the wall at. As we say, the sign for the driver being all right is that window net coming down, and we're getting reports the fluid came out of the 89 of Donald Chisholm. And there you see it, the 89 at the back of the pack, and there's the fluid coming out of the rear end of the Celtic Ford number 89. That's the hubcap that holds in that right rear axle that's in the crew member's hand right now. And it's held on by three bolts as Mark Dilley makes the walk back to the pits. We've barely gotten underway here in Anniganish, Nova Scotia. This NASCAR on TSN race from Anniganish, Nova Scotia is brought to you by VP Racing Fuels. By Total Quartz Engine Oil, high technology for your engine. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube. So we're now back under caution as the crew goes to work on the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. Big damage on the right front. Uh, that was a high-speed impact at a bad angle. We are not going to see that car back today. Not likely as the field works its way back to the start-finish line and back to the green flag here in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 300. Boy, Mark Antoine Cameron being told he's clear all around, and that's what you want to hear when you're on the outside of the front row here. He is aggressive in trying to get back down to the inside. That's kind of what Mark Antoine Cameron does. He doesn't like hanging out in the second groove. Well, and these are a couple of team drivers, too, so there might have been a plan in place. Look, get down in front. It would surprise me a little bit because Tagliani doesn't like to give much away for free. Tagliani's now hunting the 22. You see all over the back end of that GM Pie number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And the moves here are pretty subtle. He gets to the inside, but when they go in the corner, he allowed the car to slide up just a couple of feet to try to drive underneath, and that's what he's got here. Now he's working with track position. Remember one of the other vehicles involved in that incident early on, the 89 of Donald Chisholm. He is back on track, although he is four laps down. Yeah, four laps to get that axle repair. That is going to be a tough obstacle to overcome. Contact is... Warren Jones, the spotter for Mark Antoine Cameron, he has spotted as many races in this series as any spotter out there. He's a great guy to have in your ear. precise with the instructions. You can hear bumper, tire, door telling exactly where the nose of that 17 car is. Yeah, the news not good for Mark Antoine Cameron. That is a long train of cars as Kevin Lacroix gets aggressively to the inside of DJ Kennington. A great move coming up off the corner. The bumper to bumper total lubricants number 74 of Lacroix. Remember, he was solid here last year, but came up just a little bit short. Let's talk about the one love, number one, of Julia Landauer. She's doing a nice job battling in the ninth spot right now in the CBRT number one. 
And you mentioned it when we talked about it earlier. These cars in the Benji series are unique, Dave. They don't corner as well as their k and counterparts, so you've really got to muscle these race cars around the track. Talking to her after the shortened practice, of course, only about half an hour of practice for these drivers, and I said, so how does it feel? And she said, just trying to get used to the shock package and the brake package on these cars, but she says, we'll get there, and she is no slouch in a race car. 2016, the k and West Championship, she finished fourth, the highest female to ever finish in a championship in the k and West Series. Kevin Laquan to the inside of Cole Powell. That's the battle for third. I hope we get more looks of that on board with Pete Shepard because I heard other drivers saying they're going to lean on their right side headrest because there's just so much G-force here. Pete Shepard was leaning to the left going into the corner, so using a lot of neck muscle. There is Shepard in the national exhaust, number 79, battle for ninth position. With the 46 of Brett Taylor, or the 25, I should say, of Larry Jackson. Yeah, Jackson was quick on old tires and practice earlier. And there you go. See him leaning to the left. And it doesn't look like much, but with the weight of your head and the helmet over the course of 300 laps, he is going to get tired. I'm guessing by lap 298, you'll see that head resting against the opposite side because he'll just be worn out. On board now at the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. And now looking at Connor James to the inside of JF Dumoulin. Right behind them is Brandon McReynolds. And they've got to start to pick things up. That's a battle for 12th right now. And the leaders are not far behind. James in the SSG gloves. Only making his second start here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Had a good run at Jucasa. This is a totally different animal. He must have a thing for high-speed ovals because this is it. just had his hand out the window, and I'm not sure what for. I think he was just getting by the 17 Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Kennington gets down. Maybe it's something else, because I saw something out the window there as well, as Kevin Lacroix has caught the 18 of Tagliani. Ken Katu telling Alex Tagliani, you got a car inside. Now here comes another one in Cole Powell, the three cops build all Chevrolet. Can't make it stick. You hear him get to the, try to get back to the gas as early as possible. Well, and there's so much banking to help you into and through the corner, but then you run out of banking coming off. The car really gets light coming off the corner as we see this battle for the sixth position. Again, Donald Chisholm passing good race cars, but not for position. He is lapsed down. He is fast. He must be frustrated there, but he's trying to put himself in the free pass position. Because in a long race like this on a short track, you never know how many cautions are going to come your way. No, you're absolutely right. We've had very long green flag runs here in particular. Battle for second spot between, or third spot, I should say, between Alex Tagliani and the three of Cole Powell. But look at the front. We have a battle heating up. The 47 and 74. Nose to tail. Powell's going to take over third underneath the Arona EpiPen Chevrolet. And here comes Teach. Yeah, Teach ran out of racetrack. Powell made his own room. Couple of bumps to Alex Tagliani. Alex looks like he might want to get back to him and give him a bit of a push himself. The weather tech dodge of LP Dumoulin now into lap track as we ride along with Adam Martin, who is currently one lap down in the Johnsonville Ford Fusion. That car just doesn't look very stable for Adam Martin. Uh, he's been sawing a little bit on the steering wheel. More so than the drivers up of the front, Landauer and the 25 of Jackson, dice for 10th spot. Landauer having a great run in her first time in the NASCAR Pinty Series. She looks pretty comfortable. I've, I've noticed this, we just saw it there. She really backs the corner up and accelerates through. Like, she's back on the throttle almost before she's into the corner. It's, it's unique. We'll see that throughout the race, I hope. How about this? Back at the front now, the number 74, Kevin Lacroix. the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin. Watch L.P. Dumoulin at work. We're on lap 71. Remember that break coming up at lap 75 on or around. And his brother, the 04, just ahead. So L.P. Dumoulin's got to see in his rearview mirror that Kevin Lacroix is right there. You do not want to restart. 
start this race in second. So if they do plan on bidding at that break, he, he wants to maintain this position in the worst way. He also wants to help his brother out by not putting him a lap down. J.F. Dumoulin in the 04 Spectra Premium Dodge, currently in a battle with the 97 of Connor James for 13th spot. And in very real jeopardy of going a lap down. That was lap 74 across the line last time by. I'm a little surprised Lacroix is not pushing the envelope. I, I think he could drive in deep enough to give LP a bit of a push. Look who's coming. You have third place now on the back bumper of Kevin Lacroix. And fourth is not too far behind, and Alex Tagliani as well. Yeah, the top, the top five are right there. And we are on lap 76, so at any time... Wow, LP Dumoulin gets so loose as the yellow flag is displayed. And this is for your first break of the race. That's the reason for the caution. So a little chance for the leader to catch his breath and for J.F. Dumoulin to stay on the lead lap. But the VP Race Fuels race summary so far, one leader. 14 cars on the lead lap of the 18 cars who started this race. That was pretty impressive after that long a green flag run. But now you see the opportunity for pit stops. For the leaders, Tiege has already come in and done his service. That's against regulations. That will be a penalty. It looks like they've been given the go. Now the word's been given by NASCAR officials. Teams are permitted to work. Fueling beginning on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix and the 22. We will wait to see if they take tires or not. It is not required, but some teams may choose to make a switch right now. The 22 is getting a handling adjustment, and there will be tires changed on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. So Donald Teach in the 24, you, everyone is supposed to get to pit road and then wait for NASCAR to allow you to start. Teach stopped, they fueled the car and he took off. So he's sitting in no man's land, but he's going to have to restart at the tail of the field when we come back. Welcome back to the ninth race of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship. We're in Annie Gaddish, Nova Scotia. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Tom Lewis's trackside as we get back to green. So the top four cars at this restart, they did not pit. So they still got the same tires they started the race on. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix, he'll be chomping at the bit. He's got some fresh Goodyears on that car. And you, you will see just how much an advantage new tires are versus 75, 70, well now 80 lap old tires. Once we have these two laps or so to let the tires get some heat into them, I think we'll see LaCroix start eating cars up. One car we don't see at the front of the field, Dave, that's an interesting story. DJ Kennington, the Casserole Edge 17. They came down and they put a right rear tire on the race car. The crew noticed because you have time to check stagger and whatnot, they've lost a lot of air pressure in the right rear. Well, teams are only given one set of tires that can change and put on unless you can show the officials you've got a tire losing air. So they put on their spare right rear and then showed the officials, look, this was a bad tire. So they came in and put on their emergency right rear, which is different. So DJ Kennington has a fresh right rear tire, but he still has four fresh tires in the pits that they can change to later in the race. But he loses a lot of track position. He's currently back in the 14th spot. The 24 of Donald Teach, by virtue of that penalty, is all the way back there as well. That's on board the 79 of Pete Shepard, currently running in sixth spot. Alongside the ballpark dodge, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Ranger, oddly enough, got down from the high side. Normally, we're used to seeing that number 27 Mopar dodge up in the high line on ovals, but Ranger finally on. Wow, Cole Powell actually moved over to the inside to allow Lacroix to go by. And I'm going to speculate a little bit here, Dave. I'm going to play crew chief. <laughs> All these cars that did not pit for tires, so your LP Dumoulin, your Cole Powell, they know Kevin Lacroix is trying to be the rabbit. They put on tires, they're gonna try to get away. Their only goal until lap 225 is to not get lapped. You just need to stay on the lead lap, and then they can hope for tires. Anything could happen, but stay on the lead lap. And Lacroix is going to try and put in fast lap after fast lap. 
to try and eat up as much ground as he can. He's now on the back bumper of your race leader, L.P. Dumoulin. He's led since the drop of the initial green here this afternoon. A little bit of bumper tag through one and two. Just a little bit of a push. Listen to this. Right down, pasted on the yellow line. That's what you want when your car is working well. And back on the throttle so early in the corner. Laquan the hunter, Dumoulin the hunted, and now he dives to the inside. Can he get a run down the front chute? They're side by side in a one, and L.P. Dumoulin looking big picture. He's going to back off and give up that spot. And do you see what Laquan did there? He goes into the corner, lets it drift up, even two, three feet, and then drive down the hill and get that run. So you watch his hands, and Dumoulin's car is still working very well, just not quite as good as those brand-new Goodyear tires. And his head is still, whether he's on the straightaway or in the corner, his head's still in the same spot as Mark Antoine Cameron right down to the apron to try to take over the fourth spot from Alex Tagliani. Tagliani, as we mentioned, third in points coming into this one. 11 points out of first after that win at Grand Prix to 20 here. He was sixth here in Riverside. He's looking to up that finish here in 2018. Having a good run so far, but can anyone catch Lacroix? Kevin Lacroix on his total bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge leads the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 300. But the battle for second is heating up between Powell in the three and Cameron in the GM Pi A22. Here comes Cameron to the inside. Mark Antoine Cameron, we thought last weekend was his big opportunity to win a race day, but I think I might underestimate his skill set because he looks pretty good on this high bank oval, even though he's a road racing specialist. Now remember, he was only one of two drivers to take tires during that first break. Kevin Lacroix took new tires. He's out in front now. Kevin Lacroix is trying to make a bid to get up there as well. DJ Kennington coming back from that pit road issue as Julia Landauer slides up the racetrack. Brandon McReynolds, a little bit of contact on the way by. Brandon McReynolds racing, as we mentioned, in the K&N East Series this year. Best finish of fifth coming at Bristol back in April. Now a battle for tenth as Tiege continues to work his way up through this field. And McReynolds spends some time in the broadcast booth as well, doing some of the K&N West Series broadcasts, I believe. He gets to get a taste of what it's like to watch a race from our side of the fence, but I'm sure he likes it better where he's at right now. I think so, and we got to remember, as we were talking about that battle, Kevin Lacroix was right behind them, closing in. And further to Brandon McReynolds, talking to him in the paddock earlier on today. He's a huge fan of the NASCAR Finchie Series. He loves watching NASCAR on TSN and especially the Canadian drivers battling it out here in the Finchie Series. On board the number 19 of Adam Martin, currently in 15th spot. There you see a little bit of damage to the right front corner of his Dave Jacobs prepared Ford Fusion. And he's still working much too hard behind the wheel. You know, the fastest cars are going to be the ones where the driver's not putting all that much. Watch Donald Chisholm's hands. Turn once into the corner, and then you release your hands coming off the corner. That's a race car that's working well. Well, he was one of the fastest drivers in practice earlier on today, so he does have a rocket ship underneath him. But another driver who is currently riding a rocket is the 74 Total Lubricants bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge of Kamaqua. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge leading the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 300, just the way they drew it up. Next car ahead of him is Brandon McReynolds in that 28. And you saw the 74 of LeBlanc with the 24 of Donald Teach one lap down. That is important. And right now we've got nine cars on the lead lap. Remember, we had 14 cars at the break. We're down to nine cars on the lead lap. Battle for fifth spot between the 18 of Alex Tagliani and the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Quick ride on board Ranger. He had to get up and around the 25 CBRT entry of Larry Jackson. And Jackson was doing what he's supposed to do, run the line, stick to that line. Ranger was just hoping to take advantage. Brett Taylor in the other CBRT entry, the 46, just ahead of your race leader. And this is Brett Taylor racing hard to stay on the lead lap. Well, Taylor is already a lap down, and Brandon McReynolds actually the latest victim in the 28. They just got around him, and now right in front of Kevin Lacroix is DJ Kennington. 
But let's talk about Taylor and the CBRT, CBRT team. Bud Morris, the car owner, and Joey McComb, who's the team manager on that team, they always bring well-prepared cars to the track. And they always bring plenty of cars to the track. Great supporters of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And I think Donald Chisholm has just had enough. But look here, your race leader down on the inside, yeah, looking at the lap. On the 17 of DJ Kennington, and he will do that. But let's head down trackside. Todd's got an update on the drivers having a strong run. Todd? Guys, want to have a look at Pete Shepard in that 79 car, having himself a really strong run. Started back 15th because of the point situation, no qualifying. But he told me before he got in the car, I think they figured it out. They felt they could be racing today. He's raced his way into the top 10. No tires, no fuel during the first break. Crew Chief Ray McCaw, he says that's all coming at break number two. And Pete Shepard does have some experience here. Back in 2011, started fifth. Finished second. That was the year he ran seven races in the Pinty Series, picking up a win in Saskatoon. And he's quietly having a good drive today. He's got lots of speed. You can see way behind him is Kevin Lacroix. He's got to hang on to this spot for quite some time. See the cross flags there as we hit the halfway point here in the bumper to bumper 300. But it's still been all Kevin Lacroix. The 74 is putting in a torrid pace here in Anagadish, Nova Scotia. The 74 of St. Estache, Quebec's Kevin Lacroix is torn through the field here in the bumper to bumper 300. Seven cars are left on the lead lap, believe it or not. And we can see he's right up behind Pete Shepard as Shepard gets around Brett Taylor on the right. inside. Six of Brett Taylor and around the 19 of Adam Martin as he's masterfully working lap traffic. When a car is working that good, I mean, we've seen him go three wide to the inside, go to the outside. He can run anywhere he wants. Huge confidence for the driver in the 74. And remember, he just won his first oval race in the NASCAR Pinty Series earlier on this year. So we'll see what kind of pace he's able to push. Three of the next four right cars. Rear flat, guys. Right rear flat. We heard the spotter say right rear flat. Yeah, that's Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number 19. You see the smoke inside as the tire is nearly off the rim. Martin is going to find pit lane. We're under a full course caution, though. Yeah, there is not much left of that right rear at all. You see him working his way down pit lane. The rim right on the ground and the crew is ready to go to work. They'll have a tough time getting the jack under that car. I think that's what he's finding now. They, they can't get the jack low enough. They'll have to lift up on that side of the race car. The crew from Dave Jacobs racing fresh off a championship last year working on the Martin car getting a new tire on. Welcome back to Riverside Speedway. We're working lap 176, getting ready for the third restart of the afternoon. 50 laps till the next break in the 17 of DJ Kennington getting the free pass. Just eight cars remain in the lead lap. So the story for DJ now, you can see him at the back of the field. His job, don't let Kevin Lacroix catch you and pass you. You've got 50 laps until you can come in and get some fresh Goodyear tires. Well, you know, it's interesting. Now we've had a caution period. It lets the tires cool down a little bit, and that could affect handling. Wow, that was cooling down. Mark Antoine Cameron forced his way in front of the three of Cole Powell. He'll take up the second position with about a car length ahead of Powell and about 10 car lengths behind Kevin Lacroix. Yeah, you saw what that did. It just opens up that gap at the front of the field to Kevin Lacroix. Now Cameron is able to find his rhythm and get back on it to try and catch the bumper to bumper dodge of Lacroix. Pete Shepard looking racy behind the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Brandon McReynolds in the 28 is a lap down, but he's embroiled in a battle with Donald Teach. Yeah, both those drivers one lap down to your race leader. But it is a battle for ninth position on the track. On board with Julia Landauer. And you know, Adam, we were talking about female drivers in the NASCAR Pinty Series during our last race. The highest finishing female drivers in NASCAR Pinty Series history, Isabel Tremblay and Erica Thiering both had an eighth place finish at different stops over the years. 
That's some impressive fact-finding, Dave Bradley. <laughs> I think did a little work. We had a rain out. Gold, gold <laughs> star, Dave Bradley. And now on the front of the field, look at camera the GM Pie, number 22, and a loose wiggle from the bumper to bumper 74 of Lacroix. That's the first time all afternoon we've seen that car get crossways. And he still looks a little crossed up, went all the way up to the outside wall there at the exit. Cameron all the way down on the yellow line to the inside of the turn, able to close that gap to your race leader, and now he's going by. A couple of our road racing specialists spank in the field here at Riverside. Well, you know what they say about this track is it does lend itself well to those drivers who are able to carry momentum. Easy on the throttle, that's what you do in road racing. Oh, and Larry Jackson. That looks like a broken track bar in the 25. That rear end is all over the place. Now you can see it's really tucked in the wheel. Well, the CBRT number 25 pit lane, and the crew will go to work. However, there's not a lot of urgency there. Now we have a battle for fourth spot, and give it to the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Here comes the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumoulin as well as Alex Tagliani up in the high line. He'll find that hole and get down in front of the 79 of Shepard. Yeah, gets down in front of Shepard, and they'll sort out single file once again. Riding on board, L.P. Dumoulin, who hasn't done very well over the years here at Riverside. Does have a second place in 2016, but 14th last year, 7th in 20, or 2005, as a matter of fact, Four out of his seven starts, he's failed to finish inside the top ten. That's a lot of trips to the Maritimes. Battle for 11th spot, Julia Landauer in the one, and the 0-4 of J.F. Dumoulin, the Spectra Premium Dodge, and back up towards the front, there is Dumoulin and the 27 of Ranger again, side by side. Fourth spot, give it to Dumoulin. And we've seen Ranger nearly lap the field here, running the outside groove. Today, he doesn't have much mojo at all up in the high side. He's happy with the car in practice. He said it felt very, very comfortable, but unfortunately in the race and trouble for the one of Landauer. She comes down pit lane. I didn't see any smoke from that car. She just pulled it down pit lane early. The crew having a look under the back end of that race car as we watch Mark Antoine Cameron smooth as silk out here on the racetrack as we approach the second break. Look at this now, a battle for third spot as Cole Powell gets pushed up to the high line and the cops build all number three and the weathertech.ca number 47 of Dumoulin will pick up third spot. Dumoulin's cars really come on in the recent laps. I mean, he was leading the first portion of the race, but he's passed a couple of race cars here. He's looking good. Remember, those are two drivers on older tires. The top two are the only ones who took tires during that first break. We're nearing, there it is, the caution flag comes out for break number two. Yellow flag flies. One point of interest, Brandon McReynolds is in that free pass position. So after a long battle with Donald Teach, McReynolds will get back on the lead lap. A lot of drivers happy to see this caution and happy to get service to their cars. Pit lane is a busy one, but Adam, the VP Race Fuels race summary is a little more interesting. The big story to me is that there's only been two cautions for 17 laps. This has been a very clean race, although you see some donuts. And once again, the teams are released to perform service. The 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron had taken the lead. He's taking fuel. He'll get those first four tires from his start back on the car. Same situation with the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. The earlier set of tires going back on the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Here's the interesting one. Four fresh sticker Goodyears on that 18 car how much of a difference will that make well it will be interesting to see the 74 and 22 going with their older tires the rest of the field putting on brand new gear years will return to riverside speedway after this welcome back to race number nine of the 2018 nascar pinty series in the bumper to bumper 300 here at riverside speedway in beautiful annie ganesh nova scotia large crowd on hands and we're back underway under green here on lap 230 Hard to believe this was underwater yesterday. This is a rain date, and that is a big crowd of seven. Wow, what a slide! Green wide, Julie down on the apron, but hangs on to it. And now they're leaning on each other off a 
on turn number four. Cameron right up into the door of the 74 of Lacroix. And remember, these are 75 lap old tires. They came off the cars 150 laps ago. They just put them back on, and it's quite clear they are not comfortable for these front two drivers. Look at Dumoulin. He's going to hang back, and he says, you know what? Whatever you guys are going to do, I'm going to avoid your wreck. But look at Shepard now up in a fourth spot on the outside of the three of Cole Powell. Oh, and he slides up the racetrack. Powell to the inside. Ranger to the inside. They are fanned out under turn number four. DJ Kennington was a lap down earlier in this race, and now he's up on the outside. A big twitch from the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger on the, east, uh, on the inside, and Kennington has to back out of it. And he gave Ranger the opportunity to gather that car in. Look at how tight it is from onboard Pete Shepard 79. opportunity to get so many different angle views from the inside of these race cars, bumper cams, onboard cams. We've got you covered here on TSN as the number three Cops build all Chevy is right in the crosshairs of Andrew Ranger. Little bump. A little bit of a push as LP Dumoulin gets to the inside of Mark Antoine Cameron. Remember, we're less than 65 laps from the end. This has become a Saturday night special now for these guys, Dave. Well, Dumoulin knows it's time to go. He doesn't want to let that 74 get too far in front as he did during that middle portion of this race. LP driving it in again. One move of the hands into the corner and then straighten it up coming off the corner. That WeatherTech number 47 is handling well. The three of Cole Powell chasing the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. You see Cameron just a little bit loose. The back end hanging oh, up. Stacked up behind here. Stacked up behind him. Because they're stacked up behind him, he can't let come out too wide to get a run as LP Dumoulin drives to the inside of Kevin Lacroix. That didn't take long. Side by side off of turn number four. A drag race to the line. They bump as Lacroix fights to stay in the lead but he'll have to settle for second. And Mark Antoine Cameron pushed up out of the groove. This could be a long ride towards the back as they are lined up nose to tail. Oh! Oh, contact in. I think Cameron caught the wall on the front straightaway. Well, the GM Pai at number 22 was way up there on the outside. He caught more of Andrew Ranger, which I think could have a lot to do with how Ranger's day ended last Sunday at trois -Rivier. Now teammates side by side and DJ Kennington. And Andrew Ranger, Ranger up on the high side. That's where he's most familiar. But DJ Cannington has been strong. Remember, he's won here twice in the past in 2010 and again in 2012. Steven Simmons telling DJ, go get the next one. And the next one is a battle for second spot. Paul Powell has caught the 74 and is now underneath. The man in his first year in the NASCAR Pinty Series goes to the second spot. Cole Powell's having a dream season if we raced only on ovals. He has shown so well, and we expected that. You put a good oval driver and a well-prepared oval track car, Jason Hathaway and Craig Masters, the masterminds behind the setups on the three machine, they are good. Now the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Battle of the Oil Company. This is a total lubricants number 74 up on the outside of Kevin Lacroix. Give the spot to DJ Kennington. There is an example of the difference new tires make. And Kevin Lacroix is thinking about that difference right now as he slides backwards. There's still lots more reason to come on TSN. 39-year-old L.P. Dumoulin from 20 year Quebec leads the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 300 now with just 17 laps to go. I never really noticed L.P. has a curious grip on the steering wheel. That's like a 9 and 3 grip where you normally see 10 to 2. That's, that's an interesting way to drive. Whatever makes you comfortable in whichever way you're going to be the quickest, and that's exactly there you look. By comparison, that's DJ Kennington's grip. And smoke on the 22. Mark Antoine Cameron, the GM Pi Chevrolet on 
the black flag is now being shown for the driver of the 22 racing stable. And you can see Cameron checking up. He's going to bring that down pit lane to Randy Steckley and the rest of the crew. No caution as the driver who once led this race second in points coming into this one is now on pit lane as the leaders buzz by on the racetrack. So slow, 20 miles an hour is the pit road speed limit. Todd's in his pit. Yeah, guys, the smoke visible for several laps. NASCAR ordered the black flag, and Mark Antoine Cambra along pit road, another big puff of smoke. It's the rear end of that car that has given up. And it sure has, and you can tell from the smell all the way up here that it is rear end. Yeah, and with 12 laps to go, unlikely that'll be fixed, but look at this. The man who dominated the middle portion of this race now one lap down with 11 laps remaining. 11 laps to go, and we're on board with Cole Powell. He's so close. He is mounting a charge in the final throws of the bumper to bumper 300. Still LP Dumoulin out in front. The last six races of the NASCAR Pinty Series has bred six different winners here in the 2018 season. Little bit of a religion from Ryan McCluskey. Who knew? Dumoulin, who came in as your points leader here in Riverside, just needed to keep his nose clean. He wants to do even more. A great run for the 79 of Pete Shepard currently in sixth spot. Watching the scoring monitors, Cole Powell and LP Dumoulin are within thousands of a second every lap. Powell will close in half a tenth, and the next lap, LP Dumoulin is outdoing him by half a tenth of a second. Have a look at Pete Shepard as he chases a top five, and there you see his head, just as we suspected, now leaning against the right side headrest. I don't blame him. Clear by three, clear by three. Eric Baudouin, a spotter for LP Dumoulin, telling him he's clear by three car lanes over Cole Powell. And we've seen a bump and run. We saw it in Saskatoon, so we know if he can get close enough, he's willing to go the distance. And how about DJ Kennington in third? He's not too far back either. Great run for the veteran of the NASCAR Pinty Series. Under five laps remain for the driver out of 20 Air Quebec in the WeatherTech.ca number 47. LP Dumoulin out in front, but he has a mirror filled with a cops build all number three of Cool Powell. Looking at the windshield of Cole Powell, LP Dumoulin is able to lay that left front tire right on the yellow line, right where you want to, just towards the exit of the corner. That car is working perfectly. At the start of the season, once we saw what the three can do, we knew it was just a matter of time before, before Cole Powell broke through to victory lane. He did so in Saskatoon, but now it's been all LP Dumoulin out in front. Since getting around the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, he has been dominant. And the distance remains about four car lengths between first and second. Cole Powell's got one more lap to try and get it done. Working through one and two for the final time, LP Jubilee will head down the back shoot. second at GP3R, and now a win here in Riverside. We'll be back for Victory Lane. Quick drink of water. Congratulations from wife Sheila and his young son, Louis, and LP Dumoulin climbing out of that number 47, and for the third time this season is victorious. His first win here at Riverside International Speedway, and this 47 team is celebrating with big smiles on their face. LP, it was, it was a battle from uh, start to finish in this race, and you said be there at the end, as you always did. You were there first for the checkers. Oh, we were there. I can't tell you the weather tech Ben Marty was there at the end. That's a team, team win. Those guys, those girls, the whole family and people that just hang out with us all year round, thank you. Thank you, she did a great job again. She makes me feel so comfortable about racing. It's so much fun right now. We gotta keep it up. We will keep it up. Thanks, Mom. And uh, so proud of my team. That, that's, that's, that's all teamwork. Ah, t'es allé vite, vite, mon gars. 
This guy told me before the race, Daddy's gonna race and go fast, fast, fast. Well, keep that in mind. Awesome. Good. Thank you all. Thought it got his third man. victory of the season and extends Woo! his Woo! point lead. <laughs> Happy time in victory lane for LP Dumoulin. Never lost for words. We'll take a look at your top 10 in the finishing order. Pete Shepard having a good run in sixth place in that Ford. How about Brandon McReynolds finishing ninth and J.F. Dumoulin with a nice top 10 result. Kevin Lacroix fading to eighth. Sled Todd's down with your second place finisher. Cole Powell is the runner up here at Riverside. You got everything you could out of that three car today. Oh yeah, we uh, we unloaded and for this car not ever being here and me never being here, this crew did a great job. Uh, we unloaded not so good, but they kept working on it and working on it. And I can't thank them enough. They worked so hard on this and I can't thank Cops Build all enough for, uh, for coming on board this year considering we didn't have enough funds to continue after Toronto and um, I, I wanted I, anybody to win but him and congratulations to, the, to LP uh, he had a really good car today and I just didn't have enough to get to him me and DJ were about similar in the speed and just one of those days can't be mad with second but I kind of am and can't thank Chaco Fast Eddie's uh, Kubota Canada, everybody that makes this happen. Um, we'll head to uh, we'll head to Mossport. Not my strongest suit, but we got three more ovals, so we'll hopefully get them there. Cole Powell with another strong run. You know, they try to be so gracious in second place. Cole Powell is not a second place guy. Mark Antoine Cameron more disappointed as his day winds up sitting on pit wall. And look at the shakeup in the points. A 19 point lead for LP Dumlin. Cameron 26 points back and forth. Took the biggest hit, Matt Alex Tagliani now up into third spot. Photo time in victory lane for LP Dumoulin. Today's race from Annie Ganesh, Nova Scotia has been brought to you by Mopar, we built it, we know it. My E3 spark plugs, born to burn. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. Dave, we've got one more road course to go. It's Canadian Tire Motorsport Park next weekend. The total course 200 from all of us here at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.